Good morning, friends. It's lovely to be with you this morning as we reflect and share on the Word of God. I am going to read from the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 6. We read from verses 7 to verses 15. Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 7 um, to verse 15. Listen to the word of God. Matthew 6, verse 7 to verse 15. And when you pray, do not keep on bubbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many ways. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive you. Up to that point, may the Lord bless to us the reading of his word now and always. Amen. Matthew um, chapter 6, we have read from verses 7 uh, to verse 15. And here we, we come across those powerful teachings of Jesus Christ. He is teaching in this particular context. He is teaching his disciples on prayer. But well, they, when you listen to what he says, a lot of interesting things. He says that God already knows what is in our hearts when we pray. God knows our needs. Um, he says that long prayers are, are not quite helpful. Um, and it is because he has earlier said because our father knows what uh, is in our hearts when we when we sit and pray he knows what we he knows our need he knows the needs that we have things that we carry things that we long for how we long for him to come to our rescue how we long for for god to keep us company um, matthew says your father knows every detail of your life he knows every need that you have and so i have had people saying that if god then knows our needs why do we pray? Why do we find it necessary to pray? Why don't we just sit? Because God knows, God can scan, God understand. I think for me and, and some of the scholars will hold this particular position is that in praying, in God understanding our needs, there is something that happens to us. We become more and more 
uh, conscious of our own need and maybe even our own poverty in terms of of the needs and and the absence of things that we long for and not only absence but also the realization that we are not the architects of our own situations or you know of our own needs we we cannot determine and provide what we need the needs and the longings are things that are beyond our ability to provide and and to have they they come from elsewhere that ability that power come from elsewhere it comes from from god it is it is god who who gives it is god who sustains it is god who carries us so we become more and more conscious of of our needs you know it's not only god saying that these are the particular needs we have we become more conscious about those needs we become more aware of our own inadequacy to provide for those needs and hence our need of for God, of our need of for god to make those provisions in our lives and i think in this in this context as jesus continued to open and talk about prayer Prayer enable us to become more and more aware of our needs and that on our own we are incapacitated. On our own we are unable to achieve anything. Prayer help us to come face to face with our own inadequacies and that we only ability to survive is our dependence on God. So Jesus, as he continued to open this teaching, he giving a model of prayer. He's teaching his disciples that this is how you should pray. This is this is the prayer that I give you. This is the structure of the prayer that I want you to pray. And whenever you pray it, whenever you pray this, be aware that you are following the model that the Lord himself had provided. So when we look at the prayer, at the Lord's prayer, it's, it, it is composed of a number of statements. But not only statement, it, it includes petitions as well. Um, you know, when you, um, when you pray for yourself, you petition God. When you pray for others, you intercede for them. So it is full of um, statements that in some ways include the intercessions. Um, it, it talks about the petition lifting before God our own very needs as we journey, as we come before him. And the Lord's Prayer will enable us to affirm that we, we have the relationship. We have the relationship with God. We have the relationship with other people around us. But we have relationship with the world. So the prayer make us more conscious that we we are not alone we we don't stand on our own we we have other people around us we we have the needs that are there around us we have the world to worry about to pray about to intercede about so when when he when he brings them to this prayer he says that uh, jesus uh, starts by saying that when when they pray it's 
our Father in heaven. And our, our Father. It's, it means that He is not only my Father, but He is our Father. He is the Father of everybody. He is the Lord of everybody. So, um, and he starts with quite a very intimate word of father so he he makes this prayer more intimate it's it's a prayer that uh, as it is intimate it draws us into a very deep relationship to call god our father so we we then realize that we are God's children. He is our Father. He is the Father of everybody. Everybody. Not, not only me, not only you, but the Father of everybody. People that we, we disregard, people that we undermine, people that we don't look well after, people that um, we, we are even not keen to have the relationships with 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 these people but the lord's prayer help us to understand that we are in a relationship with god he is our father uh, every man every woman that lives that walk on this planet earth is my brother is my sister is your brother is your sister we are all people who belong to the family of God. And it, it doesn't, uh, Jesus does not mention um, the challenges that we have with the divisions in terms of religion, in terms of um, the challenges of, of um, sex and uh, people that men and women, workers and employees and employers he says that we all of us all of us god is our father and when you when you want to learn more about inclusivity when you include other people when you realize that you are not living by yourself you live in a world that god has created and that as much as we are individuals, we also need to remember that there is a corporate dimension to our humanity. So we, we exist because other people exist. And so we need them as much as they need us. And so he, he, not, he not only says, our Father, he... He asked that hallowed be your name, that your name be made holy. So we become more and more aware and conscious that as we move into the presence of God, as we move into that space, into where God is, He is, he is holy. We, we stand on the holy ground. So we we approach the throne of grace with awe and because we are in the in the presence of the awesomeness of god that we we see god as as great a god as beyond us god is huge but god is as loving god is kind so as we hold on to our whole our understanding of our own holiness before the father we we understand that on the basis of the model that the father has put before us and so our desire and our attempt always is to make his name holy and so he also pray for the kingdom he he says that when, whenever you, whenever you come before me in prayer, make it a point that you you understand that we we pray for the reign of God. We pray that 
the world will be filled with the reign of God. That God will uh, will rule each and every facet of life that we come across. You know, there is no place where we move and God will not say that I am the ruler here. I am in charge of this. This is under my control. So wherever we are able to stretch our vision, wherever we are able to see things that we are able to touch, we know that the kingdom of God is present in those situations. But when we, when we desire for the kingdom of God, we desire for his reign, we, we, we long for God to rule in our lives, in the lives of the world, in the lives of um, whatever we confront in our society, in the, in the body politic in the world. We long for God to rule in the socio, political and economic affairs of the world. We, we long that his reign will be visible and will be seen. That those who have been given the responsibility will administer and carry out those responsibilities in obedience to the rulership of God. And that it is, it is us subjecting ourselves to this rulership. That God is king, God is sovereign. I, I pray that as we continue this season, season of land, season of introspection, season of confession, season of forgiveness, season of cleansing, season of restoration, season that we come before God, open ourselves, that God will indeed work wonders in your life that we will emerge from this journey restored and cleansed forgiven i i pray that god will walk each and every step of the way with you and will keep you company in such a beautiful way friends i thank you so much for um, being part of of this call and and for joining us i see uh, very special people um, who have come to uh, spend this time with us and um, just so so grateful for the for the blessings and um, that we can share this space uh, together um, um, james and Reverend Ndazi and uh, T. Salani, uh, Valerie and um, the Rosie and Linda. It's been such a privilege to spend this time with you and together. And those that we are unable to acknowledge and recognize. Let us, let us pray. And while uh, we pray together and as we pray together um, I hope that in your heart will, you will be able to join me as, as we pray um, we'll pray today the prayer that Jesus taught I think as we were talking about that we understand how inclusive it is and then so let us bow our heads and say the Lord's Prayer. Please uh, feel free to uh, to follow and pray in your heart and as the Lord leads. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, dear friends, and the Lord bless you. Have a great week, and we will see one another soon. God bless. Amen.